With all of the excitement of the new Necron miniature line announced this weekend on the Warhammer community page and on Warhammer TV, I thought it would be really helpful to go over some of the Necron lore pertaining to the Necron Lords, Overlords, and Pharaons. For all those who inevitably start a Necron army, I really hope this lore inspires you to create your own custom leader to a homebrew Necron dynasty. Let's start with a brief introduction on the hierarchy of the Necron dynasties. There are three major leadership roles in a dynasty. These positions come from the ancient Necron tier culture that was established 60 million years ago. At the top is the Pharaon. A Pharaon has complete freedom to do what he wants, when he wants. In ancient times, these Necron leaders had so much power that they would wage independent wars not just against intruders, but other Necrons as well. A problem that plagued the ancient Necron tier empire throughout its entire existence. Out of these Pharaons, the Triarch was formed. It was a ruling structure that was abandoned at the end of the war in heaven, but might be reintroduced with the return of the Silent King, but we will talk about what that means for the homebrew dynasty later on. For now, let's talk about the seat of power for a Pharaon. It's a tomb world called a Crown World. Crown Worlds were the oldest and proudest of the Necron-held planets, and for the most part, they were the birthplace of the ruling dynasty. They were resource-rich planets where all of the tithes and tributes were sent. And as such, they were the most well-protected and technologically advanced worlds in the dynasty's domain. The Pharaons had control of not only their crown world, but every tomb world that made up their dynasty. This means hundreds of tomb worlds that span the length of an entire sector controlled by one single Pharaon. The goal of most Pharaons was to unify their people under their own banner and strengthen their dynasty in order to rival or become part of the Triarch. But as the Necron tier became the Necrons, and the masses became mindless robots, the Pharaon's goal changed. The focal point became gaining as much influence on the Necron overlords and lords that maintained their own free will. This was accomplished in many different ways. Some Pharaons tried to inspire their underlings with a portion of their own burning determination to conquer the galaxy. Others made alliances and bargains for support, and then there were those Pharaons who simply beat the other lords into submission, or killed them outright and took their armies. In terms of power, the Pharaons often wielded planet-destroying weaponry, from world engines capable of disintegrating stars to tesseract labyrinths that hold the enslaved remains of the star gods known as the Catan. On the tabletop, however, a Pharaon doesn't really have any additional armaments that are any different from any of the other overlords. Perhaps once the new Silent King model comes out, we might get additional weapon options for the Pharaons, but so far what you can do is simply take the stats of a named character like Imhotek the Stormlord, Pharaon of the Subtech Dynasty, and then reskin him to make him your own. The fun part of creating a custom Pharaon is figuring out what their goal is in the current lore of 40k. Was he buried in a false tomb world like many ancient Egyptian pharaohs were in order to avoid grave robbers, and now he's on a mission to return to his crown world to retake his army? Is his goal the destruction of an ancient rival? For example, another pharaoh that insulted him or betrayed him during the war in heaven? Or perhaps he has a vendetta against one of the warrior races created by the old ones, and now won't rest until every Eldar or Greenskin is exterminated from his territory. There are hundreds of other goals that you can come up with that go beyond the simple goal of conquest. It's just up to you to kind of figure it out. Another thing you need to ask yourself is what will your Pharaon think when the Silent King comes knocking on the Tomb World's door? The complete lore of the Silent King's current agenda is not out as of the making of this video, but what we do know is that he destroyed the command protocols that allowed him to rule over the Necron race. So your Pharaon has complete autonomy. Will he join the Silent King or oppose the Silent King? After all, the Necron tier people were basically destroyed as their souls and bodies were gobbled up by the Catan, all because of what the Silent King did. Now we move on to the Overlords. The Overlords are the powerful nobles that also maintain their own sentience after the biotransference process. However, many of them act as regents to the Pharaon. They control armies and have possession of many tomb worlds, however their seat of power is usually a tomb world called a core world. Core worlds were not as powerful or grand as a crown world, but were still a force to be reckoned with. They often formed a vital role in the defense or control of a dynasty's domain. As such, they were enforced with a strong garrison of troops to protect the dynasty's territories. They also acted as protectors of valuable resources, vital to the dynasty's war machines. The overlords that were granted these tomb worlds and were given this power by the pharaons were often somehow related to that individual pharaon. This was done to ensure loyalty and solidify a strong bond between the crown world and the core worlds. Just like ancient times, the overlords had the power to rule independently from the pharaon. In fact, they had to in order to protect and defend such a large dynasty. 
If an overlord had to ask for permission from a pharaoh every time an orc invaded their territory or a pirate fleet requested trade, the overlord could not be efficient enough and the entire dynasty would suffer. Overlords also gained this prestigious role by standing out as competent generals during the war in heaven. They were trusted with larger armies because their pharaoh knew that these armies would be used appropriately and for the most part they could be trusted. Overlords often acted as warlords and in ancient times they were seen as the heroes of the dynasty, crushing their enemies and earning the empire wealth, territory, and prestige. Now that the Necrons are reawakening, the Overlords are seen leading from the front lines of combat and as field marshals, directing the phalanx of Necron warriors. They represent both the strategic mind and the motivating force of the dynasty. These Overlords that prove their might in the field of battle and have succeeded in many military campaigns earn the title of Nemesaur. A Pharaoh knows he is only as good as the Overlords slash Nemesaurs he surrounds himself with. There's actually a lot of options when creating a homebrew Necron Overlord, both on the tabletop and the lore. When creating the backstory to an Overlord, one has to ask, what is my Overlord's contribution to the dynasty? Is he conquering territory that was unavailable before the Great Sleep? Is he trying to reconquer planets that belong to the dynasty? Or perhaps he is going around and pacifying the lords that are reawakening and rebelling against the dynasty? Whatever the case, the next important thing to ask is what is the relationship between the Overlord and the Pharaon? Perhaps the Pharaon elevated your Overlord to the rank of Nemesaur and has now given him a crown world to look after. Or perhaps the Overlord is attempting to prove himself worthy of this title to his ruling Pharaon. Another possibility is that the Pharaon was damaged during the sleep and is acting irrational, and it's up to the Overlord to either maneuver through the antics of a lunatic whose mind has been either damaged or is infected by the flare virus, or has to overthrow the Pharaon altogether. Maybe the military coup failed, and now your Overlord is attempting to escape the pursuing Pharaon and his armies, and is pleading for help from other Overlords while simultaneously fighting a retreating guerrilla warfare against his own kind. If you need inspiration, I really recommend you check out the YouTube channel Kings and Generals, specifically the videos on ancient Rome, because you can easily take the historical career of some of the famous generals of Rome and make them your own. Also on Netflix, I think there is a uh, series called Rise of the Empire. That's really good to just get the wheels turning. Because overlords have the intelligence to think on their own, their purpose and goal doesn't have to fit the Pharaon at all. Maybe the Pharaon was destroyed by the Great Sleep, or hasn't reawakened yet, and your overlord is more interested in exploring the new galaxy. A potential goal for an overlord that just woke up is going around and looting other tomb worlds that haven't awakened, taking the best weapons from the slumbering lords or overlords. And finally we get to the Necron Lord. A Necron Lord is often a simple general within the Necron Dynasty. These Necron Lords are also nobles of the ancient Necron Tyr Empire, and they were tasked with similar roles as the Overlord, but either haven't proven themselves or failed to become Overlords. They command a smaller army and usually only control a single tomb world with minimal importance to the grander dynasty. They make up the noble court of an Overlord and are often looked to for advice and are a source of military might should an Overlord or a Pharaon need a larger, more mobile army. Most lords are given a very specific task by their leaders, and it's up to them to utilize all of their resources and work independently to accomplish that goal. These lords that have been assigned a mission are often referred to as Harbingers, such as the Harbinger of Awakening, which is tasked to journey the stars in order to search for Necron tomb worlds to reawaken, or the Harbinger of the Storm, which is tasked with prepping a planet or a system for conquest by creating a violent storm that defies the laws of physics. Although at the bottom of the High Command, the Harbinger is still a powerful Necron and could easily destroy a whole planetary system with no help from any other lord. As such, they are greatly feared throughout the galaxy as the Necrons attack dogs. The most sadistic lords are known as Destroyer Lords, which are those Necrons that succumb to the madness of the Necron Destroyers and seek only to rip apart their foes and bring an end to the enemy with zero remorse. When creating the backstory to a Necron Lord, you could easily use the backstory that you were creating for your Overlord, but decided to go with something different. It seems that the Lords are basically the second-hand leaders that usually get the trash assignments from the Pharaon or the Overlords. Basically, they're the Percherabo of the Necron hierarchy. Now, the important thing to ask yourself when creating your Lord is what task was your Lord given by their Overlord? Is he on a mission to assassinate an important enemy leader, or maybe destroy a planet that provides important resources to the enemy army? Perhaps he was hired by an overlord to collect a specific item, such as Trazen the Infinite tasking him to capture a piece of old one or Necron tier technology. 
These Necron Lords also act as excellent enemies if you're trying to create a rival for another homebrew army. Because they are so simplistic in their agenda, you don't have to invest so much thought into their purpose. They are simply there to destroy your homebrew chapter's fortress monastery, or they are trying to kill off one of the big mechs of your homebrew orc tribe. It's easier to come up with a narrative backstory to a lord and then allude to a grander Necron threat later on in the campaign. Now I'm going to recommend some videos that I've already created that can help you create either a Pharaon, an Overlord, or a Lord. First check out our 40 facts on the Necron Overlord and Rakir the Traveler. He has a really cool backstory and um, it really showcases how the Necrons kind of have a common goal of conquering the galaxy, but it's more romanticized through his eyes. Also check out our 40 facts on the Necron Overlord Amontek. He is a really good example of a Necron Overlord that has a very strong rivalry. Now I also recommend that you check out our 40 facts on the top 4 deadliest Necron weapons. It goes over some things that you can find in the book and also just some narrative weapons that you could use for a campaign. And lastly, I really recommend you check out our 40 facts on the Necron Destroyer. Uh, the Destroyer is one of the tabletop's most uh, badass uh, Necron units, at least in my opinion. It's the one unit that I always try to take out as soon as possible because they are devastating in combat. So if you're interested in creating a backstory to a Necron Destroyer Lord, that's a perfect place for you to uh, learn more about the Destroyer uh, model. Uh, also check out our 40 facts on the Overlords. That's like specific coming straight out of the Codex type of lore uh, that hopefully gets the wheels turning and uh, it helps you create your own leader to your Necron dynasty. Now the important thing to remember is that the Silent King, the Triarch, the Necron Lords, the Pharaons, the Overlords, all of that makes up the royal court of the Necron hierarchy. There is another position called a Cryptech uh, that fits within the royal court but doesn't necessarily have a role within the hierarchy. They're just kind of like the engineers. So they, they sit with the Overlords and they can speak and give advice to the... Um, overlords because they have sentience during the biotransference process uh, they remained uh, logical because they need that engineering skill in order to create a new technology but they are not part of the hierarchy that doesn't mean that your army can't be led by a cryptech you can definitely do that um, but that's just a topic for a completely different video so again, I hope this helps. If you guys have any questions, if you guys want me to do more lore on a specific overlord, uh, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, also check out our 40 facts on the uh, Silent King or the War in Heaven if you're interested in, in learning more about the backstory of the Necrons. I think the Necrons, their lore, for some reason, I know the most of. It's not even like I play Necrons, it's just that their lore is just really, really interesting. Uh, and after completing this video i kind of want to do like a small necron faction um but we'll see what happens uh, but again any questions just ask in the comment section below thank you guys so much for listening if you like these types of videos uh, please share these videos with your friends if they're trying to get into the hobby uh, usually the lore is what brings them in uh, so share these videos and support us on patreon if you can it's just a dollar a month and with that dollar we create more videos Thank you guys so much for listening. I'll talk to you tomorrow. This is Gershwan with One Mind Syndicate signing out. Oh,